Hi folks, congratulations on the purchase of your Jackson Ford Fold. In this tuition, I'm going to show you how to put up the awning using everything you see here. In preparation for putting up my awning, I've laid out all my poles in relative positions as to where they go underneath the awning. By being prepared, planning ahead, it'll make it a lot easier. I've even put pegs in the ground in roughly the position each rope will need to go. If the wind picks up and I need to rope it down as I move along, it's so much easier to do. To make it easier for myself, what I've done is I've backed off the spreader poles and lowered the bow poles on this side of the camper. So it's what it's done is it's brought this sock level down to a manageable height for me. Now at the very front and the very rear bow pole, our attachment point for this hook is actually a hole that's punched in the top corner of the bow pole. On the centre bow pole is actually an eyelet that you're going to be looking for. So now I can simply put my ridge pole in here, line it up with the hole in the corner, give it a twist, and now it's in. So if I extend that down to the ground, that'll stay put and won't move until I'm ready to extend it out. So now I can get my other two set up, ready to zip the annex roof on. Now I'm ready to attach my awning roof. So I need to start the zipper up in the top corner here. The zipper generally will start at the back of the camper. To make life easy, I've got my trusty window pole with a hook on it. Once I get the roof started, I can hook this into the zipper and use it to pull the zipper along the length of the camper. The window pole is also a handy tool for flattening down the Velcro across the top. The better you seal that Velcro up, the better it'll try and keep water out of the zipper. For me, I find it by far easier to start with the middle ridge pole. That way, I can grab my spigot pole, place the ridge pole on top, and the canvas hanging either side will keep it upright on its own. Makes it easy to continue on. What I've also done to make life a lot easier is I've extended my poles to clear this hole that's drilled in here. What I can do now is when I put the canvas on, I can grab the little bungee hook and hook it inside there to keep the spigot on place. The front spreader poles on these actually have a little bit of an offset on them. And that's on the end that's furthest away from the wing nut. So the way to get the front spreader poles across the front of your awning right is to always put the end furthest away from the wing nut on the highest point, which here is the center pole. So now I've got that, I can hold on to this, I can actually get the rest of my poles without losing control of the awning in case the wind blows. So now I'll just pick up my spigot pole and my next ridge pole and we'll get the corner up. Now I've got the island on, grab my little hook here and pop it in that hole. Now that'll make sure this canvas can't blow off the top of that spigot, make a life a lot easier for myself. And while I've got it in position, I'll extend this ridge pole, get the canvas taut, do up one of my little Velcro retainers underneath the awning here. and that's quite secure. But as belts and braces, I can now attach these ropes to hold this corner steady so it can't move and it'll keep control of the whole awning.
basically rinse and repeat of the other end. Now I've got the gable over the front of the awning structure. I've got my middle spigot pole through the eyelet on top. I can now fasten it to the little hole here and start adjusting all the poles and get them all in the right position and the right length. important thing to remember before you raise your middle spigot pole too high is get your rope on top of the spigot otherwise you won't be able to reach it now what I generally do with my ropes is I'll put a half hitch in it so let's simply go around the pole back under the rope then up and onto the spigot now this half hitch allows me to rope it down and it will greatly resist the wind lifting that pole off the ground. It also keeps firm grip between the canvas and the pole. Also, it allows me to get my tent pegs a bit closer to the camper and still get a good angle and get them done up tight. So tighten them up and put the rest on. Now I'll jump back in the tent put the poles back up to the proper height, then I can finish adjusting the height all around the awning. Now I can put my two spreader poles in down the center. Now what I do, when I put these on, I'll angle them. So I'll get off on an angle from the pole I'm attaching to and just push them on. Then lock it onto the next pole. What I've tried to do is line this pole up with the plastic seam seal that runs down along the stitch seam. Why I do that is the water won't be drawn through through capillary action by this pole touching the canvas. So that's the best place to do it. Tighten it up and put the other one in. I want to explain the correct way to use this style of peg. It's a bent metal peg and they're very, very strong. They're quite a thick shaft on them. When you put these in, what you want to do is drive the peg in on an angle that where you bring your tent rope down to it, you're roughly 90 degrees to this shaft. Why, that, why so? When you adjust your ropes, the rope will rub on the shaft. It won't try and pull and bunch up in the corner there. If the rope pulls up into that corner, it'll tend to lock. So what you want is exactly what we see here. The rope comes down so it will friction on that shaft. This part here, when you drive the peg in, you actually want a portion of that to dig into the ground and that stops the peg turning and the rope coming off the peg. And there you go, that peg can't twist. There's still plenty of room under there that when we wanna get it out, we can pop another peg underneath and lever it out of the ground or use a hook hammer. And this rope will run freely on the peg when you're doing an adjustment. There you go, folks. Doesn't look too bad if I do say so myself. That's about 10 minutes work in a nice casual fashion for two people. Follow the steps. Remember, prepare well, get your pegs, ropes, poles, everything laid out and it'll run entirely smooth.